this video let us study about the time domain representation of the LTI system. So what is this time domain representation? This is a representation where we relate the output to the input. Okay, when both the signals are represented as a function of time. Okay, so that means x of t is the input signal and y of t is the output signal. So both are represented as a function of time, right? Function of time. And it is very easy to analyze this system, LTI system, because of the superposition property. They exhibit the superposition property and that's why it's easy to analyze the LTI system. And we also have studied about the linear systems and the time invariant systems. So the systems that are both linear and time invariant, they are called as LTI systems. Okay? So we will be studying the different time domain representation of this LTI system. So one is in terms of impulse response. Second one is the differential or difference equation. Third one is the block diagram representation. So this differential equation it is for the continuous time signal and the difference equation that will be for the discrete time signal okay so what is this impulse response suppose this is a system i am applying the unit impulse as the input unit impulse as the input so what happens the operation is performed on this unit impulse and the output that is obtained is nothing but the impulse response Okay, this is the impulse response H of T. That is the response of the system when the unit impulse signal is applied. That is same in the case of the discrete time system also. This is your unit sample okay, response. This is a unit sample response. This is a unit impulse which is also known as chronicle delta function. If this is applied as the input to the system, your output will be nothing but it is a unit impulse response or also called as the unit sample response. This is in discrete time system, this is in the continuous time system. So we know what is impulse response. Okay. Say this input signal x of t, if I consider any arbitrary signal x of t, okay, or x of n in terms of discrete time system. So what is this? This can be expressed as the weighted superposition of the time shifted impulses. That means x of t is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of tau delta of t minus tau. Okay, this is nothing but it is a shifted impulse. Okay, any signal can be represented like this. And in terms of uh, discrete time system, it is x of k delta of n minus k. This is k is equal to minus infinity to infinity. So, this is your time shifted impulses, right? So, for example, if I consider a signal x of n, okay, like this. This is a value 1, this is 3, this is 2 and this is again 1 if I consider. This is the signal x of n. I can break this. I can break this signal and I can write like this. Okay. At minus 1, it is 1. Right. So, this can be written as x of minus 1 delta of n plus 1. Right. Delta of n plus 1 means this exists only at n is equal to minus 1. So, I can write this, okay, this is the first one. Next, at the 0, you have this value 3, okay. What I can write this, this as x of 0, delta of n. Because, you know, this delta of n, it exists only at n is equal to 0. Next, 1, this is 2. So, this can be x of 1, delta of n minus 1. Okay, x of 1, delta of n minus 1, okay. 
because if it is x of n, x of k, delta of n minus k, if I substitute k is equal to 1, this is x of 1. What is the value of x of 1? It is 2. Okay? This will become x of 1, delta of n minus 1. Okay, that is what I have written here. And next it is, at 2 we have this sample, which is having the value 1. So, this can be written as x of 2, delta of n minus 2. This is nothing but it is 1 into delta of n minus 2. Okay, so what happens to get this signal, if I add all these, I will be getting the signal x of n, right? So, it's like x of minus 1, delta of n plus 1, plus x of 0, delta of n, plus x of 1, delta of n minus 1, plus x of 2, delta of n minus 2. If I add all this, I will be getting the signal x of n, okay? So, what I will do, I can write this as x of k delta of n minus k and k is equal to minus 1 to 2. Can I write like this? Because at k is equal to minus 1, I will get x of minus 1 delta of n plus 1. At 0, I will get x of 0 delta of n. Then x of 1 delta of n minus 1. x of 2 delta of n minus 2. This is my x of n. Okay, so this is what I have written here, but here I had considered only these many samples. So here I am taking this summation from minus infinity to infinity. Okay, this is why I have written this x of n as the function of this impulses, right? This is nothing but it is the weighted impulse, weighted time shifted impulses because it is having a weight here. Every time shifted impulse has, has a weight. Okay, so it is a superposition of the time shifted impulses. Similarly, what happens? We can write for the, the continuous time also like this. Okay, this is also the superposition of the time shifted impulses. So, in such cases, what, what will be your output y of t? This is also the weighted superposition of the system response to the each time shifted impulses to each impulse what happens they will be a response right so that will also be the out that will be the superposition of those Im uh, impulse impulse responses okay so y of t is nothing but it is a weighted superposition of the impulse responses So this is my LTI system which is having the impulse response h of t. This is output y of t. This is the input x of t. So if I take a Laplace, okay, it will be x of s, h of s and y of s, right? Okay, so this is nothing but what will be the output? Output will be equal to x of t convolution of h of t. Okay, let us see this. And in... Uh, uh, S domain, this becomes the multiplication, right? Convolution becomes multiplication. So, y of s by x of s, that is equal to h of s. This is nothing but the transfer function of this LTI system. This is a transfer function of the LTI system. So, now the input is x of t. x of t is equal to, you know, minus infinity to infinity x of tau delta of t minus tau d tau. Okay. So, now what happens? I will be applying this to the LTI system. Now, what happens? There is an operator which is t. I will consider the operator as t. Okay. This is the operation which is performed on the signal now. x of t that is equal to minus infinity to infinity delta of t minus tau d tau. Okay. So, this is nothing but it is the output signal y of t. This is y of t because after performing operation on the input signal, I will be getting the output signal. So, this I can take it inside. Operator, I can take it inside because this see here, you know, when the impulse is applied, what is this operator on the impulse signal? That will be giving you the impulse response h of t. So, what I will do here, this is the operator which is performed on this 
time shifted impulses okay this i can write like this so this is nothing but this one only because instead of t i am taking here the time shifted one so output also will be here it is a time shifted impulse response so this is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of tau h of t minus tau d tau this is your y of t okay this is your y of t so from this what i can say this x of t it was a weighted superposition of the time shifted impulses this h of t minus tau is nothing but the time shifted impulse response so i can consider this output as the weighted superposition of the time shifted responses okay that is impulse responses h of t is impulse response so this is the time shifted impulse this is the time shifted impulse responses so this is nothing but it is a convolution integral okay this is the convolution integral and this is nothing but y of t is equal to x of t convolution of h of t okay this is the convolution of x of t and h of t y of t is equal to x of t convolution of h of t that is equal to the integral minus infinity to infinity x of tau h of t minus tau d tau okay so let us see the convolution sum also this convolution sum is for the discrete time system convolution integral is for the continuous time system so you know x of n just now we had seen like how to write this uh, signal as a weighted superposition of the time shifted impulses so it is k is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of k delta of n minus k so now what i will do i will perform the operation on the input signal this is nothing but it gives you the output signal y of n because this is the system i am giving you x of n here this is h of n impulse response of the lti system this is y of n which is output of the system so this is equal to operation which is performed on this x of k delta of n minus k so i will take this inside now k is equal to minus infinity to infinity okay x of k and here we have operation which is performed on delta of n minus k here also if this delta of n is the input to the system what will be your output this is h of n so this is the operation performed on the unit impulse or the chronicle delta function so this is equal to k is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of k and what is this this is nothing but now this is shifted so output also will be shifted now so this is h of n minus k this is nothing but convolution sum okay so y of n is equal to x of n convolution of h of n this is in the discrete time system we also know that this convolution is commutative commutative okay that means x of t convolution of h of t or h of t convolution of x of t that will be same okay you can change the signals okay you can change it uh, that doesn't affect your convolution integral or the convolution of so convolution sum so this is commutative x of t h1 t convolution of h of h2 of t that is equal to x of t convolution of h1 of t which is again convolved with h of h2 of t so that means this is associative property we will see the proofs of this in the next video okay so this is associative what about the distributive property x of t convolution with h1 t plus h2 t that will be equal to x of t convolution of h1 t plus x of t convolution of h2 t okay then 
we will also see the differentiation property width property okay we will see this and again we will be solving some problems to understand the procedure of this like how to find the convolution of x and h that is impulse response x of n h of n x of t and h of t when they are convolved with each other what will be the output obtained 